1938, and this is uh, 1944 to 5, however, how much this simple mark is actually informed by his sensibility as a weaver. I think that's what you can see, uh, that he's using these lines uh, very consciously in, uh, in the way that a weaver would uh, think about making marks on a cloth. And indeed, the one on the left is a design uh, for a jacket. Uh, now, uh, the war closed down Edinburgh weavers, um, and uh, it was uh, diverted to different uh, production. After the war, then, it had to reestablish itself, and it did so by working closely with Morton Sundar, its sister company that produced less e e expensive cloths. And you can see here, you see it's saying, uh, styled by, if you can read that, Edinburgh Weavers for the House of Sundar. Uh, so they're keeping the name in uh, the public arena. And you can see how uh, simple the, the Sundar fabrics are. And on the left, the design uh, as, as indicated uh, for the United States. The joke after the war was you can see Edinburgh Weavers in the London show, but you can't have it. Uh, because, of course, all fabrics were restricted and uh, focused on export, earning dollars in particular. And this design, I think, very usefully actually pinpoints uh, the uh, presumed end customer of these patterns. Meanwhile, however, Alistair, a man of energy and committed to bringing art to the public, designed a huge number of fabrics for Horrocks's fashions. Yes, and we're going to have another talk on Horrocks's uh, Kate will tell me 20, 15th of May next year, so I won't dwell on it too much. Um, but it's quite remarkable that uh, Horrocks' fashions came out of a long-established uh, printing company in Preston. The fashion house was established in 1946, and from 1940, May 1947 until April 1955, Alistair was paid £550 per annum uh, for a minimum of 40 designs per year. That's a good Pay, and it's a lot of designs uh, and in fact he didn't quite finish that run of designs but he designed an enormous number of patterns for them and so we'll just look at a few